everyone and welcome back to my booktube channel Lisa in Bookland and welcome to my TBR for the Irish Readathon 2024. The purpose of this readathon which is taking place in March is to encourage people to read more Irish literature than they normally would and very excitingly there this year I am a co-host of it along with Aoife at Words of Clover and Leanne from Leanne Rose uh, who are the too much more experienced hosts so I'll link all of the announcement videos down below. So as always in March I am planning to read all Irish uh, with the exception of like if something special comes up and especially um, my in-person book club if they pick a non-Irish book obviously I'm not going to say oh no I can't read that. So yeah hopefully this TBR is a little bit realistic and maybe a little bit optimistic and perfectly hopefully a good balance. Um, I am hoping to take some time off in March so we'll see. As the first challenge they had I have every year is to read a book of green on the cover. Um, so I have to say I was hoping to use a, a book that I was reading for something else um, for this but I don't have a surplus of green books on my TBR but I am hoping to read at least one of these books um, Run Swift One Free by uh, Tom McCohran it's a children's series about foxes I've had on my shelves for the longest time years and years and years and they all have uh, grass on the cover so they all have green on the cover in some kind and um, so yeah I might read all three I'll see how I got on with the first one and go on from there so that fits in there with the second prompt which is to read an Irish children's book and I have um, as I said I'm going to read at least one of those which should be nice quick reads and I'll know whether I'm going to keep them or not another book that I'm hoping to get to is this one um, the Chingles from the East by Patricia Murphy. This is very much kind of a children's adventure story. It's about this legend that has it that the great giant Balor of the Evil Eye will return bent on revenge and destroy the remote island of Inish Allen in a search for a magical stone and only the, these Chingles from the East can stop him. And then these children from the mainland are ho holidaying with their uncle on this island and presumably they'll become involved so we'll see how that is. They also have to <laughs> contend with Sir Dignam Drax, the nasty ty tycoon who wants to cover the island in concrete. Um, so yeah, I think that'll be quite f quite a fun read. Another one I've had on my shelves for ages. I think when I was younger, I attempted to read it and I didn't finish it. Um, so that's why I want to read this as well and get knocked off my shelves. Um, not that I can remember that I didn't like it or anything. I think at some <laughs> point in my childhood, I didn't want to read magically voodoo like this I just wanted to read Eda Blyton and Harry Potter <laughs> So I think um, that was probably where this book fell into. So children's books are really fast to tick off and uh, maybe this is a bit optimistic, who knows. But uh, I have had this book as well, uh, Spirits of the Titanic by Nicola Pierce. I read her other book about the uh, children that interacted with ghosts from the Franklin expedition and I wanted to read this one as well, I bought it at the same time. So it's about this boy who falls to his death while the Titanic is being built and then he ends up on the Titanic ship as a ghost so presumably he becomes involved with uh, the sinking of it and how he sees that so yeah that might be just a fun little one again just to, 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 to fly through. And finally then, a bit of a different Irish children's book, um, Marilyn Taylor, Far Away Home. And this book um, follows these two Jewish refugee children who go to stay in Northern Ireland um, during the Second World War um, to be safe, or at least they think they're safe until Belfast is bombed. Um, I kind of wanted to seek out more stories about Belfast and the bombing that happened up there. Um, after an absolutely wonderful podcast I listened to about it, I can't quite remember which one it was now, but I'll link it down below. So uh, yeah, I just it's been in my head, I suppose, and uh, I would like to read this book, and I'll come back to that later. So the third book, the third challenge then is to read an Irish book related to the number seven to celebrate seven years of the Irish Readathon. Um, so as I got went through in my announcement video, this can be interpreted in many different ways. I d don't have any book that I can think of on my TBR that has like the number seven or the cover, number seven on the cover or anything. Um, so I'm going down the road of a book that was published in 1997. Um, and yes, this is a way of just horseshoeing in a book that I already had it my t on my TBR into it. And that is The Untouchable by John Banville. I really do like John Banville, especially his 
crime writing. Um, I haven't read that much of his like fiction, literary fiction. So this book I think is about the, if you see the episode of The Crown, um, where there's that curator, the art curator for the Queen that was actually a spy in the Cambridge spy ring. Um, it, that book is about this man and apparently he's gay as well. Um, so yeah, I can't really get a huge amount more from the back cover. I think it's more or less set after he was discovered. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, I'm looking forward to reading that one. And the other book, the other thing that I'm hoping to do for, to fulfill this prompt is to read seven short stories. I have several short story collections, some of them which I am partway through, so I'm going to use that to finish off some of these. Um, so I'm partway through uh, Claire Keegan's Antarctica. I just like got halfway through and I haven't picked up again, so I would like to finish off the rest of the stories in this book. And uh, if I run short of seven, I will read some more of the Oxford Book of Short Stories. I am actually in the middle of the dead James Joyce for the age for ages so I will uh, try and finish that off in the Irish readathon. So the next prompt then is to read an Irish book in your favourite genre. Um, <laughs> so my favourite genre obviously is historical fiction and I have a lot of Irish historical fiction on my shelves which works out perfectly. So I suppose The Untouchable would also fill this prompt but I'm hoping to read some more. So in order of the period that they are set, um, Grace by Paul Lynch is about this family during the famine and it says that um, one October morning, Grace's mother snatches her from sleep, brutally cuts her hair and tells her, you are the strong one now. And she dresses her up in men's clothes and she has to go across the country with her brother. Um, it, the plot sounds very like, um, a little bit like um, Under the Hawthorn Tree by Marita Conlon McKenna. So I think I'd be just interested to contrast that book, that book with this one. And um, yeah, I family novels are always a bit difficult to read, but I will, this one seems to, uh, it's the winner, Kerry Group Irish Novel of the Year. So, uh, and it was shortlisted for the Wall Street, Walter Scott Prize. So um, I'm expecting good things from this. Um, moving on a little bit further in history then, this book I recently um, was gid given uh, when somebody else has finished with it, no, I, they were through a middleman, so I don't know if they enjoyed it. Um, White Feathers by Susan Lanigan. Um, so Eva Downey jumps at the choice to attend finishing school, especially as she's eventually pushed into marriage by her overbearing ste stepmother. There she finds kinship and eventually love, but the man she loves refuses to enlist when war breaks out in 1914, and her family forces her to give him a white feather of cowardice, an act of betrayal with devastating consequences. Um, it doesn't actually say whether this novel is set in Ireland. I hope it is. It's an Irish author anyways, but um, the experience of Irish people with World War One is always something that's really fascinating to me. So um, yeah, just that would be a bonus. So that's World War One historical fiction. And then moving on, uh, World War Two historical fiction. Um, so I talked about the bombing of Belfast earlier. Uh, Ireland, the, the Republic of Ireland was neutral in the Second World War. And although it very much lent in favour of the Allied cause, um, you know, being neutral if there was like sailors in difficulty or anything, um, generally the people they would be rescued is how they dealt when they were on land that was difficult that was different. They said it's part historical fiction based on true events, part coming of age tale. And it's about fourteen year old Jack Roach. His father is on a ship that's sunk by a German U boat U boat and uh, he then has to, I suppose, support his family by taking up work in the same trade and the things he sees while he's there. And it's about a ship that he's on and um, they rescue these German sailors that are on a sinking ship. This book came, first came to my attention through Eric Carl Anderson. I recommend it in one of his videos. So um, yeah, he has great taste in books. So I'm sure I'll enjoy this one. Um, so I don't think it's really cheating. As well as historical fiction, I want to horseshoe one history book in there, at least one. And the book that I've been meaning to read for the last few months is uh, this one, uh, God's Executioner, Oliver Cromwell and the Conquest of Ireland. Um, the reason, why would I want to read about Oliver Cromwell? Well, a few months ago, I saw this musical, yes, a musical in <laughs> Galway called Oliver Cromwell is Really Very Sorry. And it was absolutely amazing, like absolute chaos, but amazing. So funny. It was uh, nearly a satire. I'll put up some pictures uh, so you know what I mean. But um, instead of like Oliver Cromwell's model army, <laughs> Oliver Cromwell's Supermodel Army and one of the songs is Dancing to Drogheda like I mean <laughs> 
such a good singer goodness gracious if you have a chance to see it um like, it's a really quality musical like really really quality so anyways that put oliver cromwell back in my head um anybody that doesn't know irish oliver cromwell is probably the most reviled man in irish history um based on the absolutely horrific things that his army perpetuated in ireland in the 1600s yeah i just fortuitously saw this in a shop over in England when I was there funnily enough. I think this is the only way I could possibly read about him um, was a complete book that from the Irish perspective. Yeah it's just always something I felt like I would like to know more about because there is a danger of kind of folk memory overwhelming everything else as well. Uh, so yeah I, d I think this would be an interesting read to sit down with and oh, I, I really must read more about that period of Irish history anyways. There's just so much, there's so much to read. So to read an Irish book that fulfills one of the cover prompts, um, I am going to hit some of these straight away um, and I'm kind of mostly trying to overlap them with other books. So for Animal, uh, these ones definitely I think will hit it. There is plenty of foxes on them. Um, food, I don't have one with food on it, but I think I'm going to let myself tick this off if any 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 of these books have like a good bit to do with food um house also a fail <laughs> we're not doing good so far books also no wow um but again let's see if they come up as a as a feature people finally um i think this is the best one for people at uh, the lonely sea and sky um and that photo of the fisherman uh trees there on the Irish book of short stories there are some trees in it so that'll have to do um transport yes this gives me a chance to bring up another book that I'm just doesn't fit into any other prompt but I'm hoping to um get to and I heard Jen the librarian talking about this book and I just thought it was apt I thought it sounded really really interesting Falling Animals by Sheila Armstrong does have this rusty ship in the front of it I'm not saying it's a mode of transport that I would like to be on but um it is a mode of transport so as far as I understand it's about this remote community presumably beside the sea um, um, and this person is found like dead on the beach sitting up and they don't know who they are so eventually they're buried after a few days of not being able to find it out um so i'd say it's just kind of an insular community story um i'm not a hugely literary person um but if it's set in an area that i'm interested in and especially if it's like a rural area i am likely to like it so i given that and the beautiful cover i said i would give it a go fantasy element that is more or less the exclusive reason why i picked this children's book off my shelf i think we could definitely say that that fulfills the fantasy element and finally stars i don't have anything that fulfills that lined up but who knows if something will uh, end up fulfilling that prompt after all in terms of other things that i'm hoping to read if i get to them um i think i've quite enough to be going on with there to be honest but um in terms of audiobooks i have not read yet any graham norton um so i have holding his first novel i believe um on my uh, audible downloaded already and I would also like to read um, this one, Kathy Kelly, Past Secrets. I've not read any Kathy Kelly before and um, it's more a case of I'd like to see if I like it. Um, I'm either going to read this or what I'm half thinking of maybe trying a chapter tag of like all the kind of Irish chick fit I have on my shelves. So I might do that as well, but this is one that's kind of been in my head. So after I filmed the main segment of this TBR, I actually ended up picking some more books, which definitely probably tips this into the pile of possibilities option but i just said i'd mention them here in case i do get to them um so i picked up two books from the library uh, so the first is this book that i've had my eye on for ages uh, the temporary gentleman by sebastian barry um i've only read two other sebastian barry books before and one was set during the first world war a long long way and i absolutely loved it so i've been had my eye on this one since and it's about a guy called Jack McNulty. I think the yeah, the main section is set in 1957, but it's called A Temporary Gentleman because he had a temporary commission as an officer and gentleman in the Second World War as an Irishman, which um, I just thought was really interesting. And I believe he, in the present day, he's, um, yeah, he has worked and wandered around the world as a soldier, an engineer, a UN observer, trying to follow his childhood ambition to better himself. So I absolutely love a plot like that and can't wait to get to this one. And I'd say I probably will uh, end up prioritising this one, maybe over some of the other ones, other ones that I've mentioned before. We'll see. 
Um, so the second library book then, it's following something I did last year and to be honest I have to give credit to somebody I worked with to uh, remind me of this and to inspire me to pick it up again and uh, that's On Garda Costa by Maura Guffey. Um, so it's an, a novel in the Irish language which I did read one last year and I was surprised by like how easy I found it and that girl at work um, started playing football again and um, with an Irish language team and she's actually a fluent Gaelgore. Um, so I was like yeah I should try and uh, keep this up as an annual tradition. It's another young adult novel. Um, it is about this group of children um, and their school holidays. Actually I assume they're teenagers and uh, the adventures they have in an old Coast Guard station which uh, is again completely up my alley. Um, when As soon as I saw the title I was like yeah that's the one for me. So hopefully I'll manage to make it through this again. Um, so I did actually end up picking two books up new. So um, there is another readathon happening in March that I really wanted to participate in. And that is Her Story at Han, which is hosted by Charlotte Coiny Reads and Brittany at Literally Smitten. And uh, yeah, they have loads of prompts as well. So I'll link their announcement videos down below. But I did want to squeeze in one read for that. So I recently watched a documentary about Rose Dugdale and I had heard a lot about this book. I've read about it in a history magazine and I was like, I must pick that up. Um, and it's Eris Rebel Vigilante Bomber by Sean O'Driscoll, The Extraordinary Life of Rose Dugdale. So I suppose she's... Um, very unusual figure is in she was one of the last debutantes that was uh, presented to the Queen and and she had a very aristocratic upbringing. She went to Oxford, she had a PhD, but she actually ended up becoming involved with the IRA in the North during the Troubles. And uh, the story that I knew about her was um, the theft of like all these paintings from Rusbra House. Just a very interesting story about, it, I suppose, how somebody can be so radicalised and um, like maybe applicable to today. So I don't think it fits into any particular um, prompt for the history a -thon, but it does uh, fit in with the thing of women's history and uh, even though probably not perfectly it is written by a uh, man but you know um, it's one I did really want to read. And finally this is a random one but I really like the cover uh, Wild Houses by Colin Barrett and when I read the back cover it doesn't really sound like a book for me at all but it's set in Ballina and I was just intrigued I suppose. <laughs> it's always interesting to me when books, I suppose seeing as I live here, when books are set in the West of Ireland and like not in like obvious places like I don't know Dublin or around Dublin. <laughs> it's about a simmering feud between small time drug dealer Killian English and County Mayo's enforcers Gabe and Sketchfordia. When, when the reclusive dev answers his door on Friday night he finds Dahl, Killian's bruised teenage brother, in the clutches of Gabe and Sketch Jostled by his nefarious cousins and goaded by his dead mother's dog, Dev is unwillingly drawn into the into the Ferdi as revenge fantasy. I really do love that cover of what is the story with the goat and the two X's for his eyes. Um, but yes, that is but yeah, there are some little additional reads that I did pick up. General plans for the Irish Readathon. Like I said, I'll be hoping to um, do a video of more historical fiction recommendations and that try a chapter tag for the um Irish chiclet that I have on my shelves. I am hoping to do a good few vlogs, especially if I'm off. Um, my life when I'm working isn't very exciting to vlog, but yeah, we'll try and get a few clips together, especially um, my annual St. Patrick's Day weekend vlog. Um, so yeah, look out for that and let me know any video suggestions that you'd like to see. And yes, I'm very excited to be hosting, co hosting my first readathon, and yeah, hope that you'll join in if you can. So yes, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday for my next booktube video.